Okay, February. In February, I read four books. Um, well, two books and two graphic novels, so that's a little bit better than last month, but through our overall. Um, the first one is called Cryoburn. It is part of a really long series, pretty long, um, about this character, this man named uh, Miles Vorkosigan. Um, and the series actually goes back to before he was born to his parents uh, when they first meet, and they're probably in their 20s or 30s, up to him being in his late 30s is this most recent book. I think he's like 38. And um, he comes from this really well-to-do, this um, aristocratic family. Uh, and he goes around the galaxy and initially um, because of his physical deformities that happened when someone tried to murder his mother, um, he's not good enough for the military, which is where most young men go in the society that he lives. Uh, it's, uh, Bariyar is the, uh, the planet that he comes from, and it seems to be based very much on Russia, as far as I can tell. Um, and... I would call it uh, speculative fiction rather than science fiction. All of the science fiction elements are, um, they're certainly significant. It's much more about the characters and about the situation that they're in rather than about uh, scientific kind of concepts. It's not so much interested in uh, how societies function in the future is just really about societies, how they function at all. Um, and in this book, he is going to this planet that's part of the Bariyaran Empire. Uh, he's become an auditor for the crown. Um, and uh, he goes to this planet that's based pretty much on Japan, uh, where the largest industry there is cryogenesis, where um, just about everybody on the planet uh, pays to be cryogenically frozen for a certain period of time, uh, usually decades, and he's investigating uh, what looks like cooked books. There's these huge um, corporations that are responsible for the cryogenics on this planet, and it looks like something is going on there, some sort of corruption. He gets separated from the rest of his uh, retinue and wakes up underground in a cryogenic chamber and is trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, so a lot of political intrigue, a lot about um, how a society would function where the major industry is preserving life and just how uh, that can lead to corruption. I guess you could say that's what it's about. It's a really great series. I think he's a great character. He's um, extremely uh, controlling and very good at reading people. Um, I think a lot of that comes from him being in a position where he's dependent on other people and not liking that. So he likes to sort of manipulate things in order to get where he wants, but he's just a very astute observer. I, I think he's a great, funny character. Um, I think the very first book is um, Shards of Honor, which is about his parents, um, where they meet during this war. Uh, so, you read that, that's a good one, um, but I would not recommend reading Cryoburn. It, you could read it by itself, but it relies so much on things that have happened in the past uh, that a lot of it, I think, would you wouldn't be able to appreciate it. You'd still be able to understand it more or less. It's pretty good at standing on its own, but uh, it's better to have read previous books. 
Um, the next one I read was Astro City Dark Ages Book One, Brothers and Other Strangers. Uh, Astro City is this long-standing series by Kurt Busiek, uh, Brent Anderson, and Alex Ross. Alex Ross mainly did the covers, but he also worked with, um, what is his name, uh, sorry, Brent Anderson on a lot of the character designs, on the costumes and everything, um, and they're, they were very collaborative. Uh, Astro City is basically a reimagining of maybe both the DC and Marvel Universe, um, where Kurt Busiek has absolute control and he gets to reimagine um, the background stories for basically Metropolis, Gotham, all of the major cities in Marvel and DC universes and just makes it very, um, he broadens it a lot, and it makes it specific and not, yet not specific um, and they're just very much in love, you can tell with Golden and Silver Age uh, comics and just the comics universe and how average people would relate to superheroes. Um, so the the art is pretty good. I like to count the covers a lot better than the interior art, but um, I think it's a very accessible kind of universe, so I would recommend reading that. Um, not this particular one, um, probably Life in the Big City would be a good volume to start with. Um, this one deals with like 40 years in Astro City through the eyes of these two characters who start as little kids, they see their parents murdered and it's just how they grow up and um, one of them becomes a cop and the other one becomes a criminal and um, just there's all these world-changing events that are happening around them, but they're, the writing is very smart because it makes everything that's happening with the two characters all related to what's happening around them. Um, and it might sound a little bit cheesy, but I think that... I think it's sort of taking a lot of stuff that they do in really big comic book universes like DC or Marvel where unless you follow every single issue, you're going to have no idea what's going on. Um, and I'm not a huge comic book collector. I don't read every single issue of every comic from a publisher. So to have something like that and have it down on a level where um, a non-super comic book person can uh, understand it and appreciate it to a certain degree is pretty smart. Um, so that was, that is a two-part series, uh, The Dark Ages, part one and part two, and it's a really great kind of epic story. Um, yeah, so I, I, I really, really like Astro City. I think it's a, a great series of books.